What's up, guys? Welcome back to the show this week. We are coming at you with our third breakout video for the 2024 Dynasty offseason. This is going to be a super fun one. A very tough player to kind of rank in the ranks. I'm here uh, with Goody from over at Dynasty Pros. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Recording my second video for the day, so I am staying busy. So who we are going to talk about today is someone who had the draft capital last year, but his role is kind of tough to determine going into the 2024 season. And that's going to be Zach Charbonnet of the Seahawks, the 52nd pick in the 2023 NFL draft. So Goody, why is this someone that should be on the breakout radar for people this offseason and going into next year? So he's a very interesting fantasy dynasty fantasy player because when you look at what he did last year he was very typical of what most rookie running backs would do he didn't play a ton he's you know most of his snap share somewhere in like the 20 to 30 percent he legitimately was just more of a handcuff to Kenneth Walker and all of a sudden, like Kenneth Walker does what Kenneth Walker does, which is a little nicked elbow here, little nicked knee here. That he starts, you know, having to go off the field. And then you start seeing Charbonnet run out there. And you see these little blast plays where you're just like, okay, I could see where where the talent is. Um, but we all know that this is not regular football. And, you know, if I was a Seahawks fan, I would be super giddy to have two really good running backs because then it's all like, Hey, if one gets hurt, the other one steps up and you know, the, the, the train keeps moving and fantasy. It's a lot trickier because we all know if you're not on the field, you're not producing points. And for Zach Charbonnet, um, like you could see those stats that are rolling down on the bottom. They're not overwhelming. Um, you know, 460 charge was just great in a touchdown, you know, the 33 receptions, which is good, 209 yards. Again, you know, he's he's floating in like good per touch average world, but it's, it's just not enough touches, you know. But the thing that gets me, there's two points that make me think I, I'm going to reverse that and say three points. Number one, I think. Seattle had to know something if they were going to take him in the second round immediately after taking Kenneth Walker in the second round, whether it was they were worried about the injury stuff building up and they didn't think that, you know, Kenneth Walker was going to be a workhorse. I, we're, I know we're trying to get rid of that phrase, like the the cowbell, the the the, the workhorse, the, um, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, the guy in the backfield that gets all the touches. We all know that doesn't exist anymore with running backs. So there's number one. Why would they spend the second round pick if they didn't think that he was going to be a guy that was going to contribute? Number two, I looked at it when this was like oranges to oranges. You go to the very last two weeks of the season. And again, the touches were disproportionate, which was really, really weird. But the snap shares in game 17, week 17, you had a 57-53 split where Charbonnet actually was on the field more than Kenneth Walker. And again, the touches, Walker was way more productive. He got way more touches. But why is Charbonnet out there? And then the week 18, which is the last week of the season, it ends up going uh, 53-49. So all of a sudden, again, he's on the field more than him. And you're just like scratching your head, like why would they do that? And the only thing that I really could come out with is like, they like him not as a workhorse, but more as like he could be really good at pass pro and they really, really like him for that. So he's going to be on the field more, which means he's going to end up getting those opportunities. Or the other thing, which is I just think they like him. Like he could be like a practice guy and they're just like, you know, Kenneth Walker, maybe he just doesn't overwhelm and they're just kind of like, we want him to do better. We want to get him more. Um, and then I said the third thing, and the third thing is, which, you know, I did, I've been doing a lot of little poking on this one. So whole new coaching regime in Seattle, right? And, and one of the biggies is the former offensive coordinator of the Huskies, uh, 
Gruff is now going to be the offensive coordinator for Seattle. And I went into a little deep dive going like, well, what's his deal? Like, what does he like to do? What kind of offense? And it's, it's like, it's crazy. So think about the dubs offense, McMillan, Polk, Adunze, DK, Lockett, JSN. So, okay. So he's got the receivers that he loves and he had Dylan Johnson. I think Gruff likes having a running back who can do it all. And I think when you compare Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet, I think Kenneth Walker is a really good runner. I think Charbonnet is a really good overall back. And I think because of that, he may end up finding himself in the, the, the limelight of Gruff and then all of a sudden see him be the guy a little bit more and ultimately be the guy that we want. Because we all know that there are some teams – where like like I think the last good example might just be more like Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard a couple of years ago, where like you could have a home for two guys. Um, last year, you would look at Moster and a Chan and go again. There's room for two guys if you really want to focus on it. Um, and I think that's where Zark, Zach Charbonnet just busts out. I think he didn't get a lot of touches this year. I think next year he does because I think that offense again. Seattle is like one of the craziest teams for, for the draft. Like, do they go get a quarterback? I heard on the down low that Geno Smith is quietly being shopped, especially for some of those teams that maybe are not going to get one of the top three quarterbacks. Um, and I, like I heard like, I know everybody's going crazy with the Falcons and they're saying how Justin Fields, I like Geno Smith in Atlanta. Imagine if they get Geno Smith and then all of a sudden they go get another, they get a, you know, another quarterback where they're going to be like, Hey, we're going to get a guy that's going to focus on our offense. Gruff gets his offense in place because he's never done the NFL. Right. So we're kind of like, let's see what his offense looks like. The NFL. I think Zach, Zach Charbonnet is the guy. I don't think it's Kenneth Walker. Charbonnet is a little bit bigger, a little bit bulkier, doesn't have the injury history that Walker seems to be poking on. And I think ultimately Seattle might go, if we could trade Walker, get high draft capital for him, let's restock it a little bit. And then Zach Charbonnet is our guy. So, yeah, yeah, it, it's a very interesting situation. And I like most of the points you hit on there. Um, I think for me, what's so hard about this situation is I tend to in dynasty try and be a talent over situation person because i feel like throughout the years especially since i've been playing dynasty you know the last the last 10 or so is situations change right we something may be one way today a year from now when you are still holding that player on your team because it's dynasty and not redraft the situation may be totally different and the second thing that I think I'm trying to think positively, if I'm a, a Charbonnet owner, believer, et cetera, is that just like you said, there have been examples in the past couple of years of backfield tandems that have been productive for fantasy football. Last year, Jalen Warren and Najee Harris, right? We have Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt from a couple of years ago, and that worked for a couple of years. But what you do need is a good offensive line a good offensive coordinator. And some of those things are what we are going to find out in Seattle. If they have this year, their offensive line was very bad last year, but there were some injuries. So we may just have to give them a pass uh, on that one. And that came and come down to some of the receivers too. There were a lot of two tight end sets being ran in Seattle last year, which kind of hurt JSN early on. So I think Charbonnet is a very good example of a player that's kind of right in the middle and if you get the right price on him, it could definitely pay off. But if he flashes, maybe he's the kind of guy you sell. If you're a Kenneth Walker believer, he's very, very tough to evaluate. I think a great player going into year two. So what we're going to do here with Goody just for fun is I have three trade offers. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up the trade offer and Goody's going to give us a quick answer, maybe 10 to 15 seconds on each one as to why he's leaning in that direction. Uh, we're going to do this because I just think it's a better way to gauge the value of a player other than saying, I like that guy. I like 100 players. It doesn't mean I would necessarily trade for all of them. So the first trade here we're going to use, and this is with the Dynasty Pros trade calc. This is a very simple one. Trades like this go down in leagues all the time. Zach Charbonnet for a 24 mid-second and a 24 fourth round pick. Goody, which way are you leaning in on that one? Charbonnet or the picks? 
So that's that was a tough one for me um, because the wide receivers and the quarterbacks are so dense in this draft for the rookies that your elite running backs in this rookie class are going to be there mid second, maybe except for Jonathan Brooks. Uh, he's the only one I can see him like just at the very end of first, early second. Um, so if you like Braylon Allen, if you like Blake Corum, if you like um, Trey Benson, uh, in this particular case, even though I think those guys are all good, I, I like Zach Charbonnet. So I'm going to keep Zach Charbonnet in that one. Yeah, I'm with you. I think Charbonnet is a better talent than those guys, but it's very hard to know because we do not know the situation yet for some of those players. So that is kind of a time to tell. Trade two here, Zach Charbonnet or Deontay Johnson. This one's just straight up uh, RB for wide receiver. So I will just be 100% honest. I am not a Deontay Johnson fan. Um, and I've always said, like with receivers, that quarterback has to be somebody that you – and I, they don't have a quarterback. I don't know what's going on with Pittsburgh. I feel so bad. And they still win, but they're okay winning like literally like 12 to 9. Like they don't care. Um, and I just think like George Pickens just seems like he's the guy – like he's the dog. And I think he's the guy that like regardless of who's quarterbacking there, I think that's the guy they're going to end up falling in love with. It isn't going to be Deontay Johnson. So in that situation too, I'm definitely Zach Charbonnet. And the third trade we're going to go over tonight, Zach Charbonnet or Jalen Warren. I promise I'm not trying to pick on Steelers fans. I just thought these were some good values of some of these players. This one especially because it's kind of the, the 1B in both backfields. It, it is. And, you know, it's funny because I actually snaked Jalen Warren this year in my one dynasty league. Um, and I was really happy to grab him because it was right before he started, like, like exceeding Najee Harris. Um, I think, but in the end, I think like, as we talked about, like situations change, but talent generally doesn't. I do think Najee Harris is a more talented running back than Jalen Warren. Um, and when push comes to shove, uh, Zach Charbonnet, to me, I, I'm, I, we don't like to compare people, but like he could have a, like a low key Kyron Williams type career where it's like, Wait, 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 and then boom, as soon as all of a sudden he gets that opportunity. Because uh, I can imagine all those guys who had Kyron Williams two years ago and started just cutting bait. They kept bringing in like four or five running backs, and it just didn't work out. And by the middle of last year, I mean, think about the value for Kyron Williams. I mean, like you could have probably gotten maybe a late first-round pick for him, um, and I think those people would have jumped at the chance. Um, but, you know, when push comes to shove, I think in those all three situations, it's Zach Charbonnet. I love it, man. Goody, thank you for joining us today for the third breakout episode. Uh, if you guys have a chance, subscribe to the channel, like the video, follow me and Goody on Twitter. They're right here. And I'm also going to link them down in the bio. So Goody, thanks for hanging with us today. And we will catch you guys soon.